Okay, hello and welcome back to Heroes 3 for another episode of the Castle Crusade. Let's go straight back to Linus here before I forget, and we're going to go ahead and equip the Endless Bag of Gold. As well as this, I'll probably forget to re-equip the, um, the Hourglass, but should be worth it, I think. Regardless of whether we re-equip it, Linus is clearly going to be completely fine. Uh, if we go over to Brissa and we look underground, we can see that, unfortunately, Despite the heroics of the imps or the familiars in the previous episode, Isra is back and has a decently large force. So I think we have to go back to this town and just hire out some more units. I do want to try and save some gold because I want to try and upgrade my dragons. And we're going to have to trade for some ore, I think. We are going to need some kind of defense. So we have a good collection of units at least. We should be able to hold Isra off. Then we also have the approach of Gernison to worry about. Less confident about beating him, but at the same time, I'm not going to run away from him. I think we could definitely take him on. Going across to Terek, we're going to go over to Edric, and we're going to split these in half and just give Edric all of these. That's going to keep Edric nice and safe as he goes and scouts. We should be able to flee if he gets attacked. I'm a little bit reluctant to send Edric out to scout because. I don't really want to spend 2500 on rehiring him this week, but at the same time, I don't think there's much else he can do. I was considering giving him these spell scrolls, but he unfortunately does not have a spell book yet. So if he does get taken out, then we can just flee back to a town and just rehire him and pick up a spell book at that point. So let's just go straight to the south. Let's see what we can find. So this... I believe, I was actually just wondering about this, this I'm pretty sure takes us straight across to here. That looks like the same thing. Yeah, so unexplored but not actually very helpful still, we're going to continue scouting in this direction. Uh, Ingham is going to stay in place with his Archangel, I don't think there's too much he can do, he could probably try and transport the Archangel to someone, but he's not really particularly close to Linus. And yeah, I don't think there's any point really, so we're going to leave him in place. Uh, Brissa is going to stay in place of course, and then Terek should also be pretty safe. We should split these into as many stacks as possible. And he could also go and scout. I think what I'll do in the short term is I'm going to go and try and claim this alchemist lab. And we're going to try and get back to the fortress town. Nice and safe. Hopefully Marius won't come after us. Uh, this town is pretty weak, but yeah, it's Marius who's the threat. And I can't see anyone else who's going to really threaten us there. So that should be okay. Rest of our gold, I think we will resist spending because... Yeah, like I said, we just want to try and prioritize defending Wise Oak as best we can. So let's end the turn there. I have sped up the hero movements here. The caveat to this is... Not sure what this person's going to do, so Isra decides not to attack us. The caveat to this is, of course, I'm not necessarily... Not sure what they're trying to do there. The caveat to this is I'm not necessarily going to um, remember everything I see because it, it's happening awfully quickly here. So if I forget something, hopefully the consequences won't be too severe as Gernison is very clearly coming towards us. This person too, it could potentially attack us, but I'm not going to try and defend that town as... Okay, so they're coming towards... Towards Terek. And there's Gernison too, not Gernison. Uh, the the other one. I've forgotten his name now, it's been a while since I recorded the last part. Damakin. So that's a pretty dangerous area, I need to be a bit careful of that. This is actually pretty bad. His slowest unit is a Dendroid, which is fortunately going to make him pretty slow, which means I might just about be able to get away. I kind of still feel like he could chase us. If we only make it to there, that's not great. You can just go straight along the path. Won't necessarily do that, you might try and go off course a bit, go to the School of War perhaps. I don't want to go to the north because then I'm literally stuck between Alamar, who's pretty tough, um, and then also Damacon and Marius. So definitely not a good situation, I think we just have to chance it with going back to Fortress. Returning to this town, if we have a look at this, we're going to need Another 20 ore, but we're doing okay for gold. So let's see how expensive that would be. So if we trade 10 of these, 
That only gets us five. That's not going to be enough. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be a great way to do this. Let's go straight for the Naga Bank. That might at least help us slightly. Let's hope for a big one. 8,000 gold. Okay. That's a start. It's not great. If we go up to this, we can get a bit of crystal, a bit of sulfur. But yeah, it's really ore that we need. Did not expect to be needing ore quite so much this late in the game. 46k though, that's a lot of leeway. But the thing is, we also need to upgrade our green dragons. I'm not sure exactly how much that would cost. Let's assume it's about 2,000 gold each. So we need to keep about 6k left over. So if we trade 20 of these for 10 of these, it's a horrible trade, but we can get gems back, so that's okay. And then if we switch over to this, 1,000 gold each, so we could spend 10k. Let's not do that just yet, let's see what else we can do first. So Caitlyn could actually go west instead, go to the Mystical Garden. That gets us some gold. In this case, I was hoping for gems, but never mind. Uh, Brissa is obviously stuck in place. Uh, this stuff we can deal with later, it's not really... Not really worth trying to pick up resources here, but of course we are going to take that town on. Edric is going to go and scout, hopefully can find some resources. If we go above ground here, we can see... We can see some crystal, we can also see a windmill that we could go to, but... I'm not sure we have quite enough movement points for that. It's possible. I think we should give it a go. Yeah, so we can get to this. That gets us some sulfur, which we can at least trade a few of those. And then if we go back to Loinus, it's a bit of a waste to go to a windmill, but I think it makes sense to try and go to the Library of Enlightenment. There's no way I can turn that down, so since we're going in this direction anyway, let's just go and visit that. That gets us another three sulfur. Again, not too helpful. Let's start by trading pretty much all the sulfur. I think that should be fine. So now we just need five more. We can probably trade our wood. We do have a good supply of that. Yeah, I think that should be fine. Let's trade some wood. And then we just need to trade for three more. We want to try and hang on to the crystal, of course. Let's trade a couple more of these, and then we just need to trade 1,000. We can upgrade our Dragon Cliffs. And we've still got 26k left. We just have to spend the three crystals on this. And we now have gold dragons to help hold this guy off. I would think that should be enough. There's not a whole lot else I could do. I could replace these. And it's obviously worth a go, so let's do it. And then there's a choice between 3 water elementals or 28 centaurs. Also, if we get rid of these, we're going to have a full rampart force, which is plus 1 morale. Yeah, I think that should be fine. It's also definitely worth picking up the Silver Pegasi, of course, because it gets us the Magic Damper, which is going to make Gernison slightly worse at casting spells. We still don't really know much about him. Not their strongest hero, and we don't have visions either, so just going to have to hope his stats aren't too good. Brissa's stats are pretty good. She does have some decent spells, like Blind. Yeah, I think she should be fine. I'm not going to run off. We're going to try and take that fight. So now going across to Tyrus and Orin. Orin can't actually reach the town. Uh, we could have gone to this windmill, but yeah, I don't really want to do that. Or I didn't really want to do that. Let's go over to Tyrus. Then Tyrus is going to take all the units. So I have to actually think this one through because the towers are probably going to target the marksmen. I don't want to take the zealots because I don't want to split the zealots. So I don't know what the towers are going to go for. If the towers go for the marksmen, that's fine. I can just split those. Uh, but if I split the zealots, that's a worse loss. So I think we just want to do this instead. That might be overkill. And perhaps because the towers like to go for the bottom stack, let's split these like this instead. I'm not sure that's going to make any difference, but I think this is about as good as it's going to get. And then if we compare artifacts, this is clearly superior, so I think we'll leave Tyrus as she is. 
Okay, let's give this a go. It's not massively strongly defended. If we can take it out as quickly as possible. We should be okay. Let's go for it. Yeah, so some loss is expected to our marksman. Not sure there's too much we can do about that, but... Let's just go for it. I don't really want to mess around too much with the um, the targeting of the towers, so we're just going to start the combat. Towers do go for the bottom stacks, as they always do. And these guys are free to go in. Let's see what our spell options are. So, Magic Arrow is going to do 60 points of damage. Haste is not too useful to us. If we go for these, we're going to get around 10 kills. If we go for these, I'm not going to kill those off. Yeah, so this is not going to be too easy. I probably should have gone for one big stack instead of two. Pretty sure we can kill these. Okay, so that's one stack down. Let's go for these next. And with these, let's go for their biggest stack. We do get morale. Let's see if we can finish these off. Not quite. As they are starting to target that stack. Next stack to go is the Halberdiers. None of this stuff really threatens us. Let's see if we can actually take someone out. So if we go for these, that's guaranteed kill. Let's do it. And the towers are going to go for the marksman. Okay, so these guys have 223 HP left, these guys 238, so completely safe. Let's go for these first, go for these second. And there we go, 10 losses, not too bad. Alright, so let's see what we've got. So I do want to upgrade this town. To upgrade the monastery, we unfortunately need 5 ore. Which I could trade for. So the path to go is monastery into training grounds. And then we go straight into the Pool of Glory, or in fact, we could skip the Training Grounds. Try and get the Portal of Glory before the end of the week, that would be huge. But also very difficult to pull off. So we have the gems. We just need Crystal, Sulphur, and we're fine for Mercury too, so we need Crystal and Sulphur. Let's have a look. So going back to Loinus, perfect, there's Crystal and Sulphur right there, so we can definitely do that. Yeah, so what we could do is we could get the Monastery on Day 6, Portal of Glory on Day 7. Alternatively, we could still try and go for all three. It's definitely possible. Training Grounds does require a lot of wood, which we did sell off. I didn't think we were going to need that. And realistically, I don't think we're going to get any more wood at this point, or at least enough wood. Could trade for it, but probably not worth it, so I think I'll just probably leave that one out. Yeah, let's go for Monastery Day 6 and Portal of Glory Day 7. I think that should be fine. Uh, let's put Tyrus in the town. And... Upgrading the Archer's Tower would be useful, but there's nothing currently there, and that does cost ore. I think Ingham is fine. I do like to have him in this location so that we can pass some, uh, some units across as efficiently as possible. Let's check the tavern. So the tavern actually reveals Cuthbert. And Cuthbert's not bad. Being a cleric and coming with some castle units, it's tempting to get him in this town. Alternatively, if we got him in this town, we could send him up to the subterranean gate, we could go underground, and we could use him to pick up the resources instead. That probably is possible before day 7, so let's actually tuck Brissa into the town. Let's go back to this town. Pick these up. And it uh, looks like we've actually already visited the Star Axis, so he's definitely been here before. Need to check this out too, so we've also got Serena nearby, but Serena's pretty weak. And Damakin's not too far off, but not going to be able to safely go for us, so we should be fine. Alright, so Tyrus, I think, is fine just to wait here for a turn. Let's actually tuck these into the town. And then having thought about it, I am actually going to hire Saurig purely as a guard in this town, if we can just tuck someone away. So we could temporarily tuck Ingham into this town. Go across to this town and pick Saurig up. That's going to help us get some of our gems back, also a bit of fodder in our town. And he can always swap places with Terek if this guy does decide to come and attack us in our fortress town. 
Still a little bit worried for Terek, but he should be able to flee, so that should be about as okay as we can make it. Let's just end the turn, see what happens. So Isra is coming towards us, but doesn't quite reach. Not sure what's going on with this. I think this might be Straker. Save from them for now. Tan is pretty much dead. Tan's not really a threat. And Gernison actually goes back. However, here comes Alamar, decides not to go for an attack. Yeah, does just go off course, so not currently threatened by them. Uh, Damakin kind of just does a big loop, so nice and safe from him. And that is the Castle Gate, so it's not Town Portal. Can't start using that just yet. Alright, so let's see. So Loinus is definitely going to go for this. We'll pick this up, and because Cuthbert's on his way, although I guess it's so close, let's just pick it up with Linus instead. Uh, let's go across to this. And then we'll go across to this. So Tyrus has tons of movement points. Let's see what's going on with this. So this is Straker. I thought it was Straker. Um, did seem to pause quite a lot, which... Like I say, usually suggests to me that there's some kind of movement spell being considered. He's actually really scary. I'm not sure what we can do about him. We could try and flee. So if we were to run, we could get to this monolith and that would take us across to here. The problem is, having taken a second castle town, I'd really like to try and hang on to it. So, I want to see if there's anything we can do. We don't actually need that many gems to buy the Port of Glory here, so I might actually do some trading. Yeah, let's trade a couple of these. We do have Sarek helping us get more gems, so let's do that. Pick up the Monastery. Does that help us stay alive? Not really. So if we look at what Orin has, we look at what Tyrus has, we combine those two together. I don't think it's enough. And in fact, I probably should have upgraded. Well, with it being day six, we did have to go for the monastery, but being able to upgrade the, the last few archers would be nice. Yeah, so the problem is one of his stacks is ranged, four of his stacks fly, so being in the town doesn't actually help us that much. Having lots of ranged units also doesn't help us that much. Also his stats are significantly better than ours. So best option is probably to try and run off. If we move in this direction, we're at least kind of safe. To be fair, I don't think he can catch us this turn, but at the same time he could kind of trap us. If he gets up to about here, then even if we try going to the northeast, he could probably just run us down. Uh, Tyrus, in particular, could have a very hard time escaping. So I think we do just want to let this town go for now. I still kind of want to buy the Portal of Glory before the end of the week, just to get the growth, but that doesn't make any sense. It's not the bravest of options, I know, we're kind of just turning tail and running away, but... This stuff is not going to be fun to fight, and particularly when we look at his stats. 18, 18, 11, 11. Uh, we compare that to Tyrus. Tyrus has okay stats. Orin's stats are also okay, although pretty terrible when it comes to spell power. I think Orin in particular definitely needs to run. Tyrus could maybe attempt to hold the town, but as soon as these flyers catch up to our marksmen, it really just comes down to the Archangels, and I don't think the Archangels are really going to stand a chance against all this. Because yeah, Zealots and Marksmen are both going to get closed down for sure, so... I do want to leave some fodder in the town, so I'm actually going to pass a few units across.
And I think after doing this, Tyrus should still be able to get away. This is only going to get us like one or two kills, but I still want to do it. Also, if we do leave the town completely undefended, then we can't actually see his exact numbers. Okay, so let's see how far Orin can go. I see another monolith to the southeast there. Alright, so it's a bit of a half-hearted attempt to flee. I think to be fair, we do want to try and keep all of these units on one hero if possible, and Tyrus is definitely the better of the two. So Orin does have the archery specialty, which is a pretty big thing, and it does count in his favour, but... Yeah, one spell power is just terrible, so I'm not going to go for him. I could probably chase Isra down, but it's day six. So if we can just hang on for a couple more days, we can do that with much fewer losses. Also has to be kept in mind that Briss's best spell is definitely blind, and we can't use that on the undead. If we go for mass haste, that's going to be kind of useful, but none of these stacks are really particularly good outside of the dragons. So I think waiting till next week definitely does make sense. Uh, what we could do is... I thought my dendroids were unupgraded just because this isn't Horn of the Abyss, and uh, in Horn of the Abyss they do have slightly different colours on their leaves. I think they're like orange-red leaves. But no, these are upgraded. So yeah, this town is... actually pretty close to being done. Could upgrade the Mage Guild a bit, but... I don't think we need to just yet. Alright, so Edric at this point could continue scouting, but we're pretty close to our starting town, so let's start moving back and let's try and get ourselves uh, a spell book at last. I suppose the silver lining of not building the Portal of Glory is we could just try and get the Hydra Pond instead. That's definitely doable. So we kind of end up with three different forces. We have a decent fortress force, uh, or at least the option of a decent fortress force, uh, a pretty good rampart force, and of course our castle force as well. I think that's about as good as we're going to get. I'm going to take Brissa out of the town so she has a few extra moving points. And yeah, better off not going anywhere because I'm not confident we have the moving points to get back if we do. I feel like I'm forgetting something, I probably am. Uh, this town, I guess, could be attacked. Gernison coming towards us. I could probably stop that if I spent all of my gold, but we're so near to Loinus that I think if we lose this town, it's not really a problem. So yeah, gonna save my gold and gonna win the turn there. So the key thing to look out for here is what is Straker gonna do, and Isra actually does come to attack us, and also is expected to win. So I'm not sure what I've miscalculated here. Oh, they do have, uh... They do have ballistics. So we can't blind, of course. We can go for the mass haste. Frost Ring's also an option, 105 points of damage. Doesn't really help us too much. So the main thing I'm keen to do is stop the zombies from getting in. They're actually... A bit of a threat. If I go for slow on the ghost dragons, I'm not sure that can actually stop them from crossing. That is something I considered, but I think I want to wait with these, which means these are going to come in and attack us. I guess they probably wouldn't go for the gold dragons. They'd probably go for the grand elves. 
So if I slow them, that means they probably come forward and attack the dragons instead. That's not the end of the world. I definitely thought about going for shield on something, but... Yeah, let's slow these, and let's wait. So the other thing to bear in mind is Isra does have 8 defense, and we have 1 defense. And otherwise, in terms of might, we're exactly the same. So... Can't really stay particularly safe when it comes to hand-to-hand. -hand. Gonna wait with these as well. Ooh, okay. So they've got a... Death Ray, or Death Ripple, whatever it's called. 70 points of damage, that's, um, that's kind of a problem. Still gonna wait with these. Let them come forward first. Okay, so only three of those, they can't really do too much, I'm not too worried about that. Uh, I'm gonna send these guys forward purely to block. These guys can go join in. That does make them targets for the Liches, but three Liches fighting through a wall are not going to do too much damage. Going to defend with these. Defend with these. These guys do come forward. They're not able to reach us. I can send these across just to block the Power Liches. Don't think we really need to do that. It would definitely work, but yeah, the zombies would just catch up to us, so... Just going to move across instead. And these guys can go out, they can attack these, they're not going to get the kill. We'll go for the attack on these. Also not going to get the kill, so... Yeah, I think we want to stay in our base, we want to go for these. Take them out. Dread Knights take some damage from that, and they've broken through most of our walls, but that's fine. Okay, so these guys have... 64 HP, if we go for Frost Ring we get one extra kill. We also get a couple of kills on the Vampire Lords. All three stacks are in range, so I think that's the one to go for. That can get us one kill. The main thing here is just stay out of range of these, because everything else can attack us. Go for the Ghost Dragons, we won't get a kill. We go for these, and we attack from this direction. Pretty sure they can't reach us, or if they can reach us, they can only reach us because the Vampire Lords will be dead. But I think the Vampire Lords do survive this. I don't think this is in our moat. Okay, I worked that out wrong. The Vampire Lords don't survive. Alright, so the zombies can actually reach us. I could send these just to block. How threatened are the Gold Dragons by these? And does it matter? No, I think we defend. Goes for that again. Comes after us. Defend with these. So we want to absorb the retail of the Ghost Dragons, but I don't really want to do it with this stack. Let's go for these. No chance of getting the kill there, but I'm going to wait just in case. I'm going to go for these. Okay, so we bind those in place. They go for the Gold Dragons, and they do actually do a good chunk of damage. We've already taken the retail on these, so let's just go for it. Okay, so let's see. So they're down to 65 HP if we go for Magic Arrow. We don't actually have Magic Arrow. That's very strange. If we go for Ice Bolt on these, we get a kill. Do have to be a bit careful not to friendly fire my own units. I think we should be fine. Let's just try and wipe these out. So if we go for this, that does friendly fire, I think. If we go for this, we shouldn't be able to friendly fire anything. 93 HP left on these. Want to try and protect my Grand Elves, but these are going to go next. Can't really keep them safe. They are bound in place as well, of course. Yeah, completely forgot about that. So they're bound in place, so the Grand Elves are definitely safe. These guys 
can go out as bait. Don't see why not. Not sure they're going to go for it, but still. Just about hang on with the centaurs, that's perfect. These guys have a lot of health, they should be okay. Ah, but they do get aged. Okay, so Isra's down to six spell points, the zombies are taking the bait, those things are killed. Yeah, so at this point our towers aren't going to survive too many more rounds, but I think we just want to try and pull everyone back. So Brissa will win this, the problem is, if Gurnison comes back, we have taken a few losses. On the other hand, our gold dragons are all fine, and that was really our only good stack, so we're coming out of this pretty well. Sadly, the Dwarves do not resist the Magic Arrow, but these guys are still nowhere near us. If I send these guys out, we should be fine to come back. Okay, so first tower goes down, these guys are down to 28 zombies. Just gonna go for the Ice Bolt. Then they are down to 19. So if we go for this again, and they attack us. We should finish them off with a retaliation, but Isra now has no spell points. So I think we're still better off just falling back. Okay, so Isra flees, I guess he was never really going to go for that attack. Still, we scared him off. We get basic logistics, which is great. And Straker. This is clearly just something going wrong with the AI because Straker has completely wasted that turn. And in fact, we do hang on to our castle town. Not sure who that is. And this hero is coming for this town. Just going to see how much damage we can do. So yeah, that is Gernison. I think Brissa would have struggled, to be fair. Yeah, there's not really too much we can do about this. I could absorb the retail and just try and finish off an Ifrit Sultan, but of course they do have the Fire Shield. I don't think we get a kill on an Archdevil. Yeah, I'm just going to defend. He's got bad stats though. So I guess Brissa might have a chance. Big stack of familiars. Big stack of pretty much everything. And yeah, there's not really too much else we can do. Do hang on for one more round. And they finish us off. Okay, that's completely fine. We're going to bring Linus back. And Alamar is coming towards us. So yeah, so we're going to have to buy some defenders. So Alamar has Arch Devils. We don't have a resource silo in our fortress town, which means we can't upgrade to Mighty Gorgons this turn. But even unupgraded Gorgons are still solid. A lot of these creatures are walkers, so there's a big stack of Ifrit Sultans. That's really the only big threat, so... Let's go like this. Swap these two round. We're going to send Sorog just to run off somewhere, there's not really too much useful we can do, let's just go in this direction. Let's see what we can do with Linus first, so let's go for this. Shouldn't need to take any losses. They could get morale, but I think I just want to wait here. Okay, so they are going to go for the Ballista. 
might just be able to keep it alive. They are just going for it with one stack. This stack takes a bit of a beating, that's fine. We can afford to take two losses to that. I do want to try and hang on to my spell points. We go for this, and then we go for this. That should stop them reaching the blister. Need to not take losses to both of our stacks, although as long as it's just one loss on each stack, that should be fine. Alright, so these guys have 121 HP, that's not quite ideal, so we're going to wait. We go for Resurrection. They should take this. 74 HP. Gonna defend. Defend again. If we go for this... Maybe they can actually get around, so that might have been a mistake. Okay, so in that case... Ice Bolt, 500 points of damage, let's just do it. There we go, level 25, and we've opened up all of this stuff. Let's get it with Cuthbert, let's swap these around. Just so we can claim this. And... Kinda depends whether we could keep Cuthbert safe, because I want to give him this stuff. Not sure I trust him with the endless bag of gold. He's pretty bad. He's not really in a safe place. But he is next to Loinus, and Loinus should be able to keep him pretty safe. I should probably hang on to this just in case, but I can't really see a scenario where Loinus is actually gonna want that because he's probably the best spellcaster on the map. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Alright, so let's pick up all of this stuff. Let's have a look at these. So that's plus 5 attack, plus 3 defense, obviously not an option, but... Plus 5 attack is a very small improvement on this, so let's swap them around. And we just have the 1 sulfur, so I think Loinus will pick this up. Still not quite enough to go for the Hydra Pond. Still, we got these guys. We could go through the monolith. That takes us across to here. I think Tyrus wants to go back. Do you want to try and hang on to this town? So I think we trade for five sulfur, pick up the portal of glory, and then we got 10k to spend on this town, which is not enough to keep it safe. Yeah, that's pretty difficult. Definitely want to send Loinus through, so let's go do that. Uh, if we go underground here, we can potentially take this town. Finish off Damacon. I'd probably still rather go for his town, but... I think the first thing to do is try and get our Necropolis town back. So yeah, there's an incredibly difficult choice here, which is... We can either go for the Portal of Glory, and at that point we're going to have... A lot of extra angels we can recruit. Or... We actually make some kind of attempt to defend our fortress town. And I think realistically, we're having a really hard time actually spending our gold, so lots of extra angel growth probably isn't needed. Whereas if we let them get this, that's going to be kind of annoying. I think against this particular force, upgrading the lizards has to be the best option. So we'll go for these. They're a nice beefy stack, we'll go for these. We'll get a few of these. And we've still got 7k left, so we might be able to spend just about everything. So we can either go for a few extra dragonflies, or... big stack of wyverns. Let's go for the wyverns. Okay, so I can trade for some more resources, and probably would do that. Yeah, so I need to get some more resources somehow if we go through the monolith. That takes us to here.
This is kind of the point I was fearing where we actually bring these monoliths into play because I can't figure out where these go. I think this one just leads to here, which is really stupid, but I think that's how that works. So it's only really these two that are relevant. And this one that takes us to... Not really sure about that one. Yeah, not sure, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to send Tyrus back. And regardless of what happens, Straker shouldn't be able to reach us. So yeah, let's just go back. Not really too much else we can do in that town. Okay, so Brissa is not too far from Gernison. And it wouldn't be a horrible fight. Throng of Boars, I think, should be fine. But we don't want to go for the Naga Bank just yet. So yeah, I think Brissa stays in place. Orin. Potentially in danger, but if he gets attacked, that's probably fine. I'm gonna go for this. Okay, someone's already claimed that. If we go underground here, I think that takes us to Tan, and I would like to finish Tan off. For now, with it being day 7, this seems relatively safe as far as I can see. So I'm gonna go for the stables at the start of next week. And that really just leaves Edric, who should be able to go to this. Then we can go to this. And keep moving back towards our town. So if we trade a few of these away... Go back to this town. We can pick up one more of these. So if we can get ourselves just 400 more gold, we can get another. That should be fine. Okay, so Terek has... He has some okay spells. He's got Blind. He's got Earth Elementals. Although he doesn't have Earth Magic. I think this should be fine. Yep, yeah, I'm just going to end the turn there. See what Blue does. See what Orange does. Other players not too relevant. Not sure who this is. Really not sure who that is, but that's Straker. Still not coming for us. That's southwest of the map. That is... Marius. And... Amazingly... That's so stupid. He actually... He's trying to go for us, but he just can't resist going off course. So our fortress town is actually completely safe. Didn't get to build the Hydra Pond, but... Definitely worth it just to ensure our safety. Okay, so let's go back to Loinus. Let's go in this direction. Let's take this back. So it's time to put Loinus to the test. I think he's good enough to win pretty much every fight with zero losses. I think, because he's got Resurrection, he's got all the other water magic spells, he's got all the earth magic spells. So... Also, if Gernison is in here, he doesn't have good stats anyway, so this should be completely fine. We can take Ghostman back. But after that, it's pretty much up to Loinus where he goes, and I think it does make sense if we go in this direction. Try and take that tower town at last, and start properly taking these guys on. Yeah, some very strange behaviour by the AI here, but we're going to end the episode there. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.